So um, why don't we get started with, um, I don't see Chrissy here. I don't know how to spell it. That's just her. So we'll, we'll get started. I think she's going to miss the funny video, but that'll be sad. No, right now we're doing Sunday school teaching, so not right, right now. Later. Okay. Let's, um, sorry, Kaitchen had a very important question about um, the couches and pillows. So um, let's go back here and talk about Divergent, and we're going to do the um, book, since most of you haven't seen the movies, but I do have a fun video for you guys first. So, here's the basic um, parts of, uh, of the Divergent trilogy, uh, is one choice is going to decide who your friends are. One choice is going to decide your beliefs. One choice is going to determine your loyalties forever. One choice can transform you. And then we find out that of these choices that Triss is divergent. She can't make just one choice. She's different. She's deviating. She, um, she has, uh, or if she were a mathematical expression, she would have no finite limits. But um, we'll just go with uh, that she's deviating from the 95% of people that um, when they uh, when they're born into their faction, they stay within their faction. Okay, so here's an illustration. This is um, a movie, not Divergent, Detergent. <laughs> Can you hear the sound, by the way? Yes. I remember this. Guess this means you aren't the detergent. No, we mean you're terrible and probably die. Maybe I should have taken my shirt off first. It was not supposed to do that. It was in the in the book. It does it to her ear. Right, William. Wait, William. You knew that, right? Okay. That's a good time to take off my shirt. So, like, in my apocalyptic, 
and bullets. There are a few things that um, come up, and one of them is a um, young guy take off a shirt. Um, one is a young woman who's not going to go with the um, with the flow. So I love that they called her Beatness Ever Prior because this is a lot like the Hunger Games. But um, I don't know if you noticed, but at the beginning, there was um, the one guy had a gift and he was the giver, which is another great apocalyptic um, book series um, that I would highly recommend to you guys. And then the other one was the Maze Runner and she gave her corn. Get it? Maze. <laughs> All right. So in Divergent, it's, it's dystopian Chicago. There's been a war. Um, as they pointed out in the video, they're the only people left. There's no old people left. There's only hot 25-year-olds pretending to be high school students. And then, um, but they do have a civilization. And there are five um, groups based on their um, personality traits. And then um, Beatrice is coming up on the day when all 16-year-olds have to select the faction that they're going to devote the rest of their lives to. And she and her brother, who's conveniently exactly nine months older than her, uh, are both going through this. So they're not twins. Um, so she, but she, um, she is conflicted and in a place for a different, um, a different uh, household, if you're thinking Harry Potter, then she will never get to see her family. And they have a ceremony where you cut your hand so it's a lot worse than the sorting hat, but um, it's it's a lot. Um, and in fact, they they have these psychological tests they have to go through. So they have to drink this serum. tests. You saw that in the serum that uh, I mean in the, the video that they really are into their serums. There's the test serum. There's the mind control serum. So. Um, Tris turns out to be divergent. She's not any one of the factors. And that can mean death because she um, is able to think more freely for herself. And one of the things I love about this book is it's set in Chicago. And when you do see the movie, it's Chicago after the war. And so there's a lot of really great special effects uh, that they do to make Chicago look like it's been through a world war. All right, this is a very sneak peek of what the movie looks like. I can't hear anything. Is there even a sound? Even... Told you none, of, none, none of this looks like what you imagine it to look like. In the book, no. No, none of it does, and that's one of the things that you, it's really important to remember. Um, when you read a book first and then you see a movie, is that movies and books are two completely different art forms. And so um, what translates in a book in your mind often does not translate very well into the screen. And so... Um, this was a very Hollywoodized version, and um, to be honest, I don't think I've seen this, the second um, movie in the series because this one was so unlike the book to me. But let's take the quiz. Everybody's got their paper and pencil, right? Okay. Yeah, you number your paper from one I'm to get my tape for the book. But some of you have already... Um, done the BuzzFeed quiz. So let's see if this matches your BuzzFeed quiz. Well, Cajun, you better come here. It's not a BuzzFeed quiz. So we're going to have um, Cajun get a piece of paper and they, and they um, number it from 1 to 10. All right. Well, we'll actually, what we'll do is I'll write for you, Cajun. So this is actually the book thing that's actually in the book. Walk into a room, and in front of you is a table, and on the table is a knife and some cheese. You must choose one item or the other. What do you choose? If you choose the knife, write D, and if you write, and if you choose the cheese, write A. Okay. 
Okay, so Kachin is picking cheese. It's your favorite kind of cheese. So cheese, Kachin's picking A, and I am picking, um, I'm picking the knife because knives are ex more expensive than cheese. Cheese is expensive too, though. Candy. Specific types of cheese. Like, super rare aged cheese can be very expensive. It could be very expensive, but it might not taste very good. But a knife you can keep forever yeah. and a cheese you just eat. <laughs> They're it. very bitter. All right. They're probably very, 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 very strong and bitter. Okay. Kitchen says that she's choosing the craft singles, which is not a good choice for cheese. You're standing out. If it were Wensleydale with blueberries in it, I might. Wensleydale. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thank you for getting that fabulous re reference. You're standing in an empty room when a snarling dog with teeth bared begins to approach you. If you would sink to the floor and wait the dog out, write B next to number two. If you would run, write C next to number two. Which way would you run? Out the door, I think. Kitchen wants an option for dog, and this is why we're not showing you. Because they don't want to be right, so, um, I am going to write D, um, and Kitchen's going to write D. She's not. None of us are going to run because we're too slow to run. Okay, question three. You know a good friend is lying to your best friend. If you would tell your friend the truth, write C next to three. But if you would mind your own business, avoid causing conflict, and let them figure it out on their own, write A. I'm just going to put, I just put A. Okay, so Cajun's putting put C. C. I'm putting and C. I am actually putting A. Same. I'm putting A. Because if it's none of the bu our business, then. Right. It, it might be none of your business. I'm with you on that. Okay, here's question four. It's Saturday afternoon, and you have several hours of free time on your hands. If you would help with chores around the house and to make things easier for someone else, write A, B next to four. If you would read a book, write E. Um, okay. In, this, in the book, it couldn't go this far, it, it, it couldn't go this far because her, how her results went. It went a little bit different, but it, the, first, the first two were the same. All right. Well, there's, there's that's why we have ten questions. Okay, here's the scenario. You are invited to attend a peaceful demonstration against war downtown, or prepare meals for homeless people. So, would prepare meals for homeless people. So, which would you do? Would you attend a peace rally? Write A. If you would prepare meals for the homeless, write A B. I'm going to write A both. I don't want to go to a war. A. Against the war, never mind. I'm going to a peace rally against the war. I want that because then... I would do the A, and then I would go... Because that would stop a war from killing thousands and millions of people. And it's not like I would be the only one preparing this for the whole book. There'd probably be other people. That's really a good, neat idea. I like that, William. I really like that a lot. I like your thinking there. I would do that, and then the next day I would go like, okay, I'm going to prepare some meals. Yeah. Oh. So you're divergent. You're thinking that you could do both. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah, that's... Okay. After high school. <laughs> Number six. After high school, you have two choices. You have only two choices after high school. You're going to become a jet pilot for the Navy 
or you're going to join a think tank, which is an organization that conducts research and engages in advocacy on social policy and political strategy and economics. Casey, <laughs> I'm just gonna put E. I don't want to fly. I don't want to fly a jet pilot. E because I don't want to be part of all that stuff, and that's too much to think about. Well, if you think about it, but then you get to control it, right? Because people take your advice. Uh huh. I still want to fly a pilot. I still want to become. I have D D A E A E. Right now, I have D D A E A E. So two of each letter. We've got four more questions to go. A D. A man approaches you, and he offers you two books. One is a book you've been wanting to read for months. The other is a book your best friend is saving money to purchase. You may choose only one. Are you going to choose the book? Hi, Chrissy. Sorry, um, my, it wouldn't work, so um, it's just our internet's not working very well. So we had we were in the car doing this. Sorry. Well, we're taking a quiz to find out what what faction we would be in, and I will send it to you later so you can take it along with a really fun video that you can take. Oh, okay. Be honest, I would not. I would kind of want my own book because if they're already saving a bunch of money, that would be kind of like what? Because what if they lost a lot of stuff to save that money? And then you'd be like, wait, I just saved all this money. For I just got the oh, book. yeah. So you'd be taking it out of out of their hands, and, and you would be taking away all of their, um, all of their hard work by just giving it to them. That's yeah. Funny. I would I would just take the one that I wanted to read for months. Okay. And plus, what? And plus, what do they get from that? They don't learn how to work for something. They just get it handed to them. And then they just think, oh, I'll just get everything handed to them. Because some old man is going to approach and offer you something that you want once or somebody gives you a friend to save it. So I can just be like, okay. These are all good answers. I think they're telling <laughs> you a lot about your personality. Yeah, this one's hard. Yeah, this one is hard. Because I've been the recipient of books that I would have loved to have bought, but have cut off. Because I had other priorities financially. They were on a book wish list. And I've been thrilled to receive that book that was on my wish list. So that's See, a tough one. It's a tough question. I um, would actually, um, part of this involves what your circumstances are. I have so many books that I've wanted to read for months that I chose A, B, not because it's the nice thing to do, uh, um, but because I can like get street cred with my friends by giving them a book <laughs> that, um, that they've wanted. And it saves me the stress of adding one more book that I know I want to read, but will never have time to. So we have different motivations here. But also, but also none of my friends even like reading. So it's not like they would even want a book anyway. Yeah, well, there you go. So so it, a lot of this is, is depends on the context. Okay, here's an easy question. Would you rather be honest or avoid conflict? Avoid conflict. Yeah. So mm. I'm not gonna That's be hard. No, I'm not gonna be honest. I no. am absolutely writing down. I'm very Kaitlyn says she's gonna be honest. I would avoid conflict at all costs. In, in because fact, what if you, when you were honest, I got you in trouble because there was something about you. If, if, if the, the first one would be like candor. Right. And then you'd get stuck in there. And you so wouldn't be able to get out. Here's a thing that happens a lot of times when you get grown up and you're in a relationship. You say to your husband or wife, do these pants make me look fat? <laughs> and it may be that they make you look so fat, like a hippo about to give birth. But they're and like, if, no. But if if they avoid conflict, they say A. 
But if they're honest, it's C, right? Because they don't want them to get mad, even though they were the one that asked the question. Right. So, so C is an interesting question here. Okay. Yeah, that one's hard. That one, that one is really hard. Another circumstantial. So here's another circumstance. A man is being mugged in an alley. You can either intervene and try to stop the mugging and protect the innocent man, or you could try and get help. D. I'm choosing D. If you would stop, if you would intervene to stop the mugging, you write D. And if you would try to find help, you write uh, C. This is really hard because I've actually been in this circumstance. Right. You and were I did both. I called 911 and I did an intervention. Oh, so which everyone got mad at me for doing because a gun was involved. So, so maybe you're divergent. <laughs> um, you would do D though, so you could be. Thomas Kitchen, what what are you? Are you going to go get help or are you going to intervene? All right. Was that a donut? No, we had, um, Kachin, did you make the cinnamon rolls? Oh. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me do it in front of you all. <laughs> Consider the following statements. Which is, which is more true about you? I am selfless, always putting others' needs before my own. Or to you, I am intelligent, and that is what's most important in life. Now, I can't read because... I, I would not put number one. This well, is awful. Isn't I, it? I, I, I don't really want either of them. Well, which you, one No, is, actually, I would put number one. What which is you know, more true? Both of them. But, like, even if you put number one mostly because... Um, I'm not that self. <laughs> but then intelligence is not, the, is not what's most important. What if they're both a no? What so if, if, you, if you put number one, but you know you're not selfless all the time, then that's not an intelligent choice. But if you put that you're intelligent and that's what's most important, <laughs> then... You're, you can't be if you're not considering other people's needs. So they cancel each other out. You could choose number two, which is E. Does it say on your screen, um, if you choose number one, it's A, B? Yes. Okay. Oh. Pigeon doesn't have an answer for that one. I, yeah, I'm like... Needle. Well, if you chose, and this, I think yeah. this is going to make the, the point that I want to make later on. Um, I think it's making itself right now. But if you, I'm choosing E because then I'll know when to be selfless and when to not be selfless. I'm choosing E because of wisdom. Just pick E because E. Just because E. Just because. I think wisdom's different from intelligence. Yes, it is. Kachin just said that. Wisdom is different. All right. Look, so, Kachin, what's your answer on this? Neither. Okay. All right. So, we're going to so add many, up. Um... Okay. Which <laughs> of the five letter options do you have the most of? Um, a drawing. Yeah, we have a drawing. Um, I have three D's, three E's, three A's, and one A. So I have one. I guess I'm divergent. One, two. Okay. Three. I don't have most of anything. All right. Kachin has three C's, two. One C. Two ABs. So Kachin is candor. That's the one that always tells the truth. One AB. Um. 
down, sister. I am, I am equal between Dauntless and Erudite. All right, William, what, what were you? Which do you have the most of? I'm counting. Uh, I'm one, two. Oh, I thought he said I have the most of um, D's. I have four D's. Figure it out. I am Dauntless. You are Dauntless, and that's what Still the dauntless. BuzzFeed plays. Erudite. Say. Erudite, okay. So Megan is erudite. There was there was four D's, and that's funny because when I did the test, um, well, kind of did the test, but like I was finishing when I was fin when I finished my quiz, I got erudite too. You did, okay. So you got erudite. So so you can always trust a BuzzFeed quiz. Um, I'm dauntless. Like always trust. Um, a, well, I didn't. I, I took a play belt, play belt quiz. I feel like oh. I only saw like three D's, but like, so then I'm equal between like Amity, Dauntless, and Erudite. Okay, but I would so probably be Dauntless. So you're pretty much equal between. If you have the same amount of like a couple numbers, if you have the same amount, you would be divergent. Mm -hmm. I know that's what I just said. That's right. So you would be yeah, mine. Yes. Emily Divergent. You have to change it from Dauntless to of Divergent. And that's why Divergent's not a faction, yeah, William. I just realized what, what I was about to say. No, you have to change it to Divergent. Hey. No, because my faction would be Dauntless. I got the part where they got the, the, the mind control and where they're on the train. Which That's dauntless. Is not in the mind control, and is not in the mind control either, because he holds well, that's One of the things. Thank you for making that point, William. That is actually a really, really good point. Now I didn't hear from Kristen. Which one did you get? If I count the ones that I put both, I lean towards dauntless. Otherwise, I'm kind of evenly distributed. Okay, so you're you would pretty much be divergent too. So let's find out what your results mean. Okay, so here's here are the five factions. There's abnegation, which is the selfless. There's erudite, which is the intelligent. So it's sort of like the raven claws. And it's interesting that the uh, raven claws here, they're both blue. Um, dauntless, which is the brave. Amity, which is the peaceful and candor, which are the honest. I'm yeah, I cannot be honest. I cannot be honest with lots yeah, of the, things. In the I movie, never and be the, the people from candor really bother me the most. Um, and they say things that are true, but they say it in like hurtful ways. Yeah, they, it's uh, manipulative like, truth. And I could never be an amity because I'm just like too rough, too rough. Erudite. Yeah. Well, you, wait, when you're divergent, can't you still pick your own faction? When you are divert, well, regardless, and here's the thing in this society, regardless of what your um, test up results are, is, and regardless of what the test tells you, you can pick whichever Whatever. one you want. Yeah. That I would pick dauntless. And then uh, put my blood on the hot, sizzling coals. The, the yeah, I'd... I, 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 be dauntless mostly because um because one i just like dauntless so much. dad Trish's dad didn't like it, it from what the book said he was he, mad his mom was her mom was smiling because then again also his her mom was he used to be dauntless but then uh, okay so you've told a secret here william her mom was dauntless and she chose abnegation. See, she chose. Um, so the thing is with all of these, what the point of the book is, and it's a very Christian point, which is your choices define you. You may be, you may lean towards one of these things, but you can choose any of these characteristics at any time. And some of um, the characteristics 
of, for example, um, let's go with Dauntless. William, you brought this up. They're brave, but at one point in the book, they get used for the plans of the erudite because their minds were more easily controlled than any of the other factions. So the, the erudite, while they were intelligent, they were very much tempted by power. Abnegation were um, put in charge of politics because they were selfless. But because they were selfless all the time, they didn't see the erudite coming for them. Uh, and they didn't see it. So each of these characteristics has a good side to it and a bad side to it. And one of the things we learn about Triss being divergent is that she can't have her mind controlled and she can choose any of these things. Now she's, she tends more towards Dauntless, but she, she can make choices anytime. So here is the um, book covers, and I'm only showing you this as a, uh, a sorbet between lessons here that in Britain, the book covers were very different than they are here in the U.S. Hmm. So there's abnegation. Huh? There's a game that's from Dauntless called Dauntless. There's a game called Dauntless. There's a, a movie called Dauntless. <laughs> Um, abnegation. Oh, she's got books. There, there are the, um, okay, so we, you've seen the, the U.S. covers. The British covers are very, very. British, I don't like the British cover, covers. I like these. Yeah, I do too. I like, um, oops, I went ahead one. I was meaning to go back one. The British covers are, are more, are, they're, artistic in a way that talks about Triss's journey and the um, the book covers in the U.S. one the first one is one choice can transform you and then the second is one choice can destroy oh, you. Those are awful. That's the only yeah, reason like the only reason that they do this because um um, well, yeah. probably because um, they'll probably feel more compassionate towards that in Britain than in America, and it would be more visually appealing to somebody in Britain than rather than the divergent ones. There are. Go ahead. I. You like the British ones better? I kind of see groupthink in the U.S. covers. There is a bit, you know, there's, there's symbols of, of each. Remember at the beginning when you talked about how the um, movie was different, appeared to be different than the books. There are different art forms that appeal to different mindsets. And so, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because culturally, if, you know, we talked about Harry Potter earlier, their book covers were different. Um, and in fact, um, Harry Potter in Britain is the Philosopher's Stone, is how it was originally written. And they decided for the American market, no one would read a book about philosophers, so they changed it to sorcerers. sorcerers. And, and it but honestly, the philosopher is the original! And, the, and, and then, eventually, uh, then eventually it comes to um, Full Metal Alchemist, and then everybody likes the philosophers, uh, and then they're searching for the Philosopher's Stone. Right. right. So abnegation is um, the the um, the order that Triss is born into, the faction, and they re deny themselves rights and conveniences. Um, they value selflessness. She only gets to look in a mirror twice a year, and that's when her mom is cutting her hair. Um, they they wear gray. Um, they say that the war was started because of selfishness. Um, they discourage doing anything just for a person's own enjoyment. Um, they don't have guns or weapons because they said that's just self-defense and that's self-serving. They don't gossip. They use guilt as a tool rather than a weapon. They use guilt to remind themselves that they can do better. But still, but still, even though even though they're trying to do trying to um, be good and stuff, they're still denying 
right of like food, like all the food that um, they get in the factions to the, from the faction list. That's true, and and so they have this plant based diet. And when Tris gets into Dauntless, she has a hamburger for the first time in her life. And one of the things that she learns is that she's been physically weaker because they've been denying themselves food for others. And remember we talked about in one of our lessons that you, um, when you're on an airplane and there's a problem, you put the mask on yourself before you help others. That it's self-care is really important and self-care is one of the things that abnegation doesn't do. But you know, I think that we try to think of abnegation as being the obviously most Christ-like of um, the five factions. Uh, but I think that there are Christ-like characteristics in but, all the factions. William, yes? Okay, yes, Chrissy? Chrissy, are you going to read these scriptures um, for us? But they tell you specifically... Yes, but also they tell you specifically to first put your mask on so that you can help more other people faster. Right, exactly. So you take care of yourself so that you can help more people faster. So there are some points where if you try to be completely selfless, you might hurt your, you might end up hurting yourself. Um, okay, who wants to read these scriptures for me? I have three on selflessness. Me. Okay, go. Whoever said Nothing me. Bear selfish amb ambition or vain conceit, rather in hum humility, value others above yourself, not looking to you to your own interest, but each of you uh, to the interest of the others. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be every vile practice for the whole law is fulfilled in one world. You shall love thy neighbor as yourself. So these, these three scriptures, um, you know, there are over a hundred verses in the Bible about how it's important to be selfless and that you don't want to do things out of selfish ambition or to make yourself look good. And you're not supposed to um, think of yourself as better. And that when people are selfish, that's where things go wrong, right? That's where things go off the, the track. And um, next. so... Um, the, the whole law of everything in the Bible is you should love your neighbor as yourself. So abnegation a lot reminds me of the Amish. They wear gray. Um, they help people. Um, Amish are really farmers, though, um, and craftsmen more than anything. The Mormons are different. We'll, we'll do that another lesson. But there is some... some um, crossover so um they wear you know they wear plain clothing their children are obedient and quiet i kind of like this i'm liking the abnegation they're obedient quiet children their houses aren't overly extravagant um if someone chooses to leave their community you never see them again it's considered vain um to look in mirrors and um and they're part of a larger, but in, in this book, they're part of a larger community. And they only wear gray, and they think that selflessness is the best attribute. So let, let's talk about Amity. Did anybody get Amity? I only did I got, one Amity. I got, I got equally Amity, Dauntless, and Erudite. I only did one, one Amity because I just, I'm not. I did three. Yeah. Yeah, I think I had, I think I had um, only two Amity. Kachin says that she is choosing Amity. This is what she's, she's going to. Their clothes. Uh, um, they have bright colored clothes. They blame the world's problems on Ouch. aggression. It would always be really. so kind the night. and loving and free. They would probably 
Or they'd probably try and pick up the dog and just be like. But yeah. also, but also, <laughs> um, Amity. Okay, do not attack this lady. Okay. But Amity in the movie is way more is way different than what you expect. But it's in like it's beautiful in like a modern way. Yeah, it's beautiful in the modern way. It's peaceful. They just live at peace with everyone. They're friends. They. There is, Cajun just said, they just vibe. <laughs> these are also very Christ-like characteristics. Cajun says that the whole thing with conflict is that people's vibes are wrong. Do you, do you vibe with that? There, there are over 56 Bible verses on kindness. Here are two. Who wants to read these? Me. Okay, go. There, um, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. We're called to also be kind. Kindness. Okay, there are also over 150 Bible verses on friendship. So, who wants to read this one? Okay, go for it. Friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. That greater love is not is not. The greatest love in the world is to sacrifice for your friends. Okay, so here's Dauntless. This is where all you guys ended up. So we've got um, Emily's like. Yeah, I ended up in an erudite. Did you? Okay. <laughs> I, I, I vibe with erudite. That's, I'm half Dauntless, half erudite. William's hey. got Dauntless. Kristen, I think, has some Dauntless. Well, actually, I'm one-third Dauntless, one-third Erudite, and one-third Amity. Okay, so you are very divergent. So, um, she's, they're not intimidated, they're intrepid, they think that all the world's problems are from cowardice, they, like, train themselves to be prepared to defend the city, they're loud, they're boisterous, they are going to, they're going to take care of um, everyone. And don't think, forget, slightly stupid, but slightly stupid and can be controlled because they allow their passions to control them, right? And so they, they, um, a very, very accurate point is they were the ones that were most easily controlled by the government. So as we mentioned, there are over 365 times in the Bible that um, that some version of do not be afraid, fear not, um, or do not be afraid are in the Bible. So, Kristen, why don't you read these? <laughs> Picking on you. Hold on. It's a little small. Oh. I'm on my phone. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41 10. Peace I leave you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. John 14 27. So. We are definitely called not to live in fear. Oh, I'm loving this eyeball here. And, and the evil queens. Um, oh, no. Okay, <laughs> okay let's... Oh, we got to pick up the pace a little bit. Erudite. I'm, I'm about half of this. Blame ignorance for the world's problems. The erudite pursue knowledge and ingenuity for the sake of, being, of doing good. And they believe that knowledge leads to prosperity. And they always wear at least one piece of blue clothing because blue causes the body to release calming chemicals. And a, and a 
and they want to be have a clear mind. Just just like Ravenclaw, also the smart people were blue. It's just, they all it, were, and then for me, it's just too calm. It's just too calm, too quiet. And is it they all wear glasses too? Yeah, I think they all have wear glasses. Like Caleb glasses got glasses, and, like and then she's like, "Why do you have glasses?" I feel yeah, like she I, I asked him in the book, "Why are you wearing glasses? You don't need glasses." Yeah, and, and it, 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 it like really like that could mess up your eyes. Although ignorance technically is a yeah, a that's lot true. That's true. Problem. That's what I was about to say. That is probably I would blame. I would if I had to blame something, I would probably blame ignorance. Well, out, of all, I out of all the ones right here. Out of all the ones, and so that's why they kind of want to take over. But there's a lot of people who think that you can't be smart and can't be religious. And that, my friends, is just wrong. You absolutely can be smart and intelligent and have faith. Because there's a line between what you know is real well, not saying that this isn't real. It's just saying that you know that science can be proven and science is true. It's, this is a belief and a practice. Not saying that the Lord will will solve the Lord will solve most of your problems, but it, it's also saying that you can understand reason while also being religious. Equally dangerous is being religious and ignorant. Yeah, that. that, that and, and let's just say, there are a lot of really dumb religious people, too. And there are some yeah. really smart we ones. Don't, we don't need to talk about current news. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't need to talk about the, yeah, let's, moving right along here. <laughs> <laughs> so... So here's the thing, though, and I think William brought it up, or, or maybe it was uh, Megan who brought it up. Being, and I know that Kachin brought it up, which is being smart isn't necessarily being wise. You can have a lot of head smarts and be really dumb. And so wisdom, and the Bible encourages us to pursue knowledge, absolutely. Uh, and I have some scriptures here for you on that. But it more importantly encourages us to pursue wisdom. Because this wisdom is what will stop wars, stop fighting, stop ignorance. Knowledge is just something. Like, that would be a very good faction. If they so, like, I have a knowledge question for you guys. Is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable? Fruit. 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 Would you put a tomato in your fruit salad? No. No. You mix it. You put cut up tomatoes in with strawberries and pineapples. No. And grapes. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Just because so it's a fruit doesn't mean it's sweet. It's that's wisdom. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in with your fruit salad of um, pineapples and um, and strawberries because it would taste. And then getting that that weird um seed. Okay, who wants to read these scriptures for me? If no one else wants to, I will again. Okay, go for it. What? Who's doing okay, it? Um, oh, you are. For this yeah. very reason, make every effort to supplement your failure, I mean your faith, um, sorry, you didn't see it, with virtue and virtue with knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And it is my prayer that your love may bow may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Amen. 
I love that in Proverbs, they call it like it is, they have this candor moment. They say fools despise wisdom and instruction. Because so, fools do. Because they know do. that their ideas are completely dumb and make no sense, but the only reason they fight for it is because they're fools. Because they're fools, yeah. And, and so whenever I hear someone go, I hate going to school, I'm not going to learn anything. I'm like, hmm, there's a fool right there if they despise wisdom and instruction okay the last one is candor candor are in a state or quality of being frank and open they're sincere in their speech and they are pretty free of bias and impartiality which is why they're the judges in this society and they just value everything as black and white and they think that if people weren't um people didn't have so many gray areas, um, life would be better. And it just occurred to me that um, in the book and in the movie, candor is, um, has a lot of disgust for abnegation. And now I realize that candor only wears black and white and abnegation wears gray. So of course they have disgust for them. Mo because, because selfishness is the complete gray area of of being frank, open, sincere in speech and expression. That's literally the gray area. It's in absolutely that. a gray area because they're being selfless. And, and so I now understand why um, she chose those colors for them to wear. Ooh, light bulb going on. Okay, but you know what? The Bible also says that there are, um, we, should be, we should focus on integrity. Once again, over a hundred verses on this. I'm going to read these ones. Um, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. That's Proverbs 12, 22. Colossians, do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices. And then finally from Ephesians, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. Now, they do say, though, here, speaking the truth in love. And that's one of the things that the candor people really don't, um, don't do. They speak the truth, but they don't care if it hurts your feelings or not. And there are ways that we can speak truth to someone um, that... Uh, we can do it in a way that's loving. So we don't have to say, going back to the example at the beginning, the husband might, might not say, yes, those pants make you look like a hippo about to give birth. But he might say, you know, I think you might look better in something else. And there, that's a more loving way to say, yeah, you look fat in those things. So there, there are ways to be kind with when we're being truthful. Okay, so di the divergent themes are um, the dangers of conformity. There's a lot of danger in conforming to just one group or quick. Um, equality is not always equal. Um, each of these- That's why we need equity. Exactly. That's why we need equity, not just equality. Very good point. Thank you. Um, it's, uh, you know, because it's a young teen novel, um, it's about finding and accepting who your identity is and, you know, um, confronting your fears and, and growing up. But there's also a big element of sacrifice in it, isn't it? And self-sacrifice. I remember we read um, John 15, 13 earlier where it said, greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. And that's very evident in, in these books. Okay, very quickly, let's just go through the characters. We've talked about them a lot. Okay, so there's Beatrice. Um, she was um, 16. She's born into abnegation, and she's about to choose. Um, Caleb was also born into abnegation. He's a smarty pants, though, and he ends up choosing um, erudite. Andrew Pryor was born into and chose abnegation. That's their daddy. Uh, and he's a council member, so he's pretty high up in the government. 
And then um, Ashley Judd there is, uh, uh, was born into Dauntless, but chose abnegation, which is a pretty rare choice. So once again, the moms are the cool ones, right? Yeah. And then there's four. He's, he was chose, he was born just like we find out, spoiler alert, he was born into uh, abnegation and chose Dauntless <laughs> too. And he's 18 and one of the things I didn't put on the slide is he takes his shirt off. Before Tris, before Tris, um, went into Dartless, went from abnegation to Dartless, he was the only one that had ever taken that choice. Uh, ah, so that's a good point. point. He was Dartless. the one. That, so, of course, that makes him the in, instant love interest, too. And we saw at the beginning... Get it, though. I don't get the love interest. I, I really don't, don't get it. it. Like, you know, how the heck do these two people, they're completely different. This kid... Different, completely different life story. Falls in love with a girl who completely different life story doesn't even make sense. I don't get it. I, I just I don't, don't get it. it. Well, okay, so here's something for you guys as you start to consider the world of, of teenage romance is that if a guy throws a knife at you and he throws a knife at your head and nicks your ear, you probably don't want to date that guy later. I'm just but, but saying. But in the real world, it would be illegal anyways because he's 18. And but she's technically, not. technically, the reason he nicked the ear was because he did because he wouldn't have she wouldn't be able to go if he didn't do that. So. That sounds like a, a lame excuse. But still, it was it's still a lame excuse. Would say to get you to go out with him. I'm just saying. All right. Then there's Christine, Christina. I like her. Um, she was born into yeah. Tinder. Uh, and then there's Will, who's born into Erudite. And... Al's dead. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just went nuts there. <laughs> okay. The truth is that we should really aspire to be divergent, right? <laughs> that there are great aspects of each of these factions, but there are also downfalls of each faction. And, and so, also... Um, Jesus. Stuff that happens in this book explains why we should aspire. To and this is why we're better off in the real world. This I is... just figured out something. Yeah. The DNA, um, um, for the test, for the test that we took, D is divert, I mean, Dartless, C is Candor, E is Erudite. Hey, you didn't, you didn't realize that already? I did not realize that. All <laughs> right, William. Okay, well, you know, um, you're caught up now. Uh, that was my little secret test. But through the writings in the Bible, I think I tried to make a point to you guys that we should, that Jesus asks us all to be selfless and intelligent slash wise and brave and peaceful and honest. These are all good qualities. And one of, the, one of the last things I wanted to talk to you guys about was predestination versus free will. Do you, have you ever heard of the term predestination? That is an old term um, that some people still believe, which is you are predestined by God to either be um, saved or lost. And it's one of the themes that... Um, that you see in this movie is, is Triss predestined because of her birth to become uh, abnegation? And so I wondered if you could think of any other movies that deal with the topic of predestination. Are you, are you born into one thing? Can you choose to be something else? Hunger Games? Hunger Games? Uh, White Fang? Harry Potter. You do one of them. Harry you can't Potter. do one of those, yeah, Harry Potter, but you can't choose a different one. Well, you kind of can, but you kind of can't. I, I said, I said Harry Potter, I get, I'm not Harry Potter, I said Hunger Games, I guess because, like, you're born into, like, different, um, what are they called, districts, and oh, they um, focus on different things. It's kind of similar, yeah. 
the greatest showman because he she sh- could have been a tailor, but he decided to be a showman. Right. There are a lot of movies that like this, but I'm going to tell you about my favorite movie about predestination. What? Maybe. My thing froze. This is my favorite movie about predestination. I don't know that. Whatever. I don't know that movie. You don't know the movie Babe? Uh, you got to make it a lesson. Okay, that's going to be our next lesson. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, can't. Well, I was going to I was going to say Black no. Panther. Yes. Black no, Panther. No, please ain't Chris. Oh, you know what? I want to do news radio. Oh, Black no. Panther. No one knows. Okay. Well, anyway, Babe is a pig. And he wants okay. to be a sheepdog. And all the farm animals are like, you can't be a sheepdog. You're a pig. Your destination is the table. We're, your farmer's going to eat you. And Babe is like, no, I am going to be a sheepdog. And guess what? Babe becomes a sheepdog. Well, he doesn't become a sheepdog. He becomes a sheep herder because he didn't, you know, get an operation or anything. Sheep pig. Yeah, he becomes a sheep. Boy alone. Baby boy alone. Uh, alert, alert. Boy alone. <laughs> becomes a sheep. <laughs> but, but really... What did you expect from from that? Yeah, I know. Really, what did you expect? So this is this just will um yeah, yes. When she's picking her fact, she like close she shut her eyes closed and then put it on Diver and it not Diver. She put it on Dauntless. Like she literally just closed her eyes and was like it, Chris. All right, do you want to see this choice? Maybe next week can we the week yes, after that can we do Black Chris. Panther? You know, um, it's a good question because, you know, the actor who did Black Panther passed away this week, and um, I really kind of would like to do that just in honor of him and because I had no idea that he was going through um, colon cancer when he was filming. Nobody did. So I've given away Babe. And if you guys haven't seen it yet, you really are missing out. So watch it as soon as you can. But let's, yeah, let's do Black Panther next week. I think that would be awesome. Okay. Plus, I want to see it again. So what is the one choice that matters? But we didn't see the clip. You skipped over oh, the did clip. did you want me to show you the clip? Yes. Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, I got to go back to you. Go back one. All right. Let's see if it'll let me show you the clip. Nope. It's not going to let me show you the clip now. <laughs> it just doesn't want to show the clip. Nope. No. Nope. I debated whether I was going to put this clip in because it makes me sick. No. Nope. You're going to have to like look it up on YouTube of where she. But what is it called? I can't see anything. It's called. Um, I think it's Trissa's Choice or something. I'll post it on my Facebook. I'll post that. I'll put a link that you can get to. Sorry. Oh, this is where she, this is where she's choosing. Right, where she's choosing. Question, is Black Panther next week or is it Babe? We're doing Black what? Panther. Which one is next week? Is, is Black Panther. And then and- Babe? Before, um, before um, my mom showed us, we it, I I I saw that it was on the top at Disney Plus, but I didn't see it said um, that it, I didn't see it said something about how it was in honor of him. Like, and then I and then when we were watching TV at night, and then I was like, oh, it says that I didn't see that before. Yeah, yeah, that that's really sad. I was very surprised by that. Forty three years old. Mm. Okay, so the one choice that matters is, Black Panther. is to be divergent. We're, we're asked to be all of these things. Don't be just one. We, because we've given our lives to Christ, we can choose each of these things. And so we can be selfless, intelligent, brave, peaceful, and honest. And, and, and God gives us the power to be each of those things. So let's pray.
God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the, the choices that we're allowed to make because we have free will. And we pray that you would be with each of us this week. We pray that you would help us to uh, be all that you call us to be through you. And that when we're struggling, Lord, um, that you would give us your wisdom on how to uh, do what's right and, and how best to serve you. And please be, be with everyone if they're suffering from any kind of illness, Lord, help them to uh, get better. And we pray that you be with everyone in their studies and help us to grow in wisdom and knowledge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. That was a good lesson, Norman. No spoilers. What? Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, it was a bunch of spoilers. Do you, do you want me to see if I can play that video? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me stop something here for a second. I'm going to stop share. And then I'm going to... Um,